Well, hello and greetings from Northern Michigan. Today is March 21st. Yesterday, March 20th, was the spring equinox. That gave us an opportunity to do a little science, and let me tell you how we measured the circumference and radius of the Earth. I used the method of Eratosthenes, who was a Greek mathematician living in Egypt about 200 years BCE. Eratosthenes lived most of his childhood in what is now the city of Aswan in Egypt. Aswan is located on the Tropic of Cancer, and on June 21st every year, the sun shone directly down a deep well in that city. That is because on the summer solstice, June 21st, the sun is directly overhead at the Tropic of Cancer. Eratosthenes reasoned that if he could calculate the angle of a shadow cast in Alexandria, some 500 miles away, he could calculate the circumference of the Earth. Now every year after the Nile floods, the government would hire distance walkers who were professionals that were set to pace out distances to survey the new land. Now with that, Eratosthenes was able to get an accurate distance of 500 miles between Aswan and Alexandria. On June 21st, he calculated the angle of the sun to be 7 degrees, so he surmised that that 500 miles was 7 degrees of the circumference of the Earth. Since 7 degrees is about 1 50th of 360 degrees, he surmised that the 500 miles was about 1 50th of the circumference of the Earth, or 25,000 miles. The current accepted measurement is 24,901 miles. So more than 2,000 years ago, somebody with a stick, relying on somebody counting their steps, was able to calculate the circumference of the Earth to pretty good accuracy. Let's see if in 2019 we can do a little better. Now let's take a moment and see an animation about what the spring equinox actually represents. Well, now that we've seen what's going on, let's show our setup. Now, what I've got here is a builder's square, which is seven inches on a corner. I've got a pocket level, and I have a paint stick. Now, I've put some reference marks to make sure that I put the builder's square on properly when I actually do the measurement, because I won't have long to do it. The equinox today is at 1.42 p.m. and six seconds. I have an Apple Watch using internet time. And I'm going to try and hit it exactly, or at least as close as I can get it. The pocket level is there because it's important to have that stick as level as possible. So let's go outside at the Equinox and get it done.
Five seconds. Okay, so let's see how we got our measurements here. Now, as you recall, what we did was we set a square up on this paint stick. You notice that I put an index line here, and then I also put one at four inches just to make sure that I was right up to the edge. Now, the sun came in from this general direction and it caught this corner right here and it's caused a shadow to form down below and you see the marks of that shadow right here and here. Now notice that the actual distance was from this lip right here and as you can see we have a mark. So what we're going to do is so we're going to go ahead and measure that from that mark to here and you see it comes to seven and a quarter inches. So that's how long the shadow was. Well now the question becomes how long was this? And we do the same thing. And as you can see, it's slightly less than seven and a quarter. It's actually seven and three sixteenths. So we then convert that to decimal, and those are the numbers that we use in the triangle calculator. Now we'll use those numbers and do a little math. We know that the tangent of angle B is the length of the shadow over the length of the stick. We'll plug our numbers in and come up with an angle of the sun of 45.248 degrees. Now at the spring equinox, the sun is directly over the equator. So the angle formed by the shadow of the sun to my location will give me my latitude in degrees. Now the actual latitude of my observation point was 44.16 degrees. Using a builder square and a paint stick, I was able to find my location within about 80 miles. Now a friend of mine, Harry, in Tennessee, did the exact same observation at the same time. Here is one of his setups. It's a 24-inch stick. And here is the shadow that he measured at the equinox. Now, at the same location, which was about 35 degrees north latitude, he also had a 73-inch stick. And here he is measuring the shadow from that. Now one thing he did on his measurement was actually chart the arc of the shadow, enabling him to get a more accurate measurement, and all of us were able to determine the true direction south at the time of the equinox, because at solar noon on the equinox, the sun is directly south of your observation position. The builders of Stonehenge and other early observatories took advantage of this to find the first day of spring. And here you can see the raw data. Harry's observations were both labeled A, and my observation is labeled B. Now here's the full data table. A couple of interesting things. Using a stick seven inches long, I was able to determine the radius of the Earth to 110 miles. With his 73-inch stick, Harry was able to get it within a quarter of a mile. On all three observations, we were able to do better than Eratosthenes. Our maximum error on the circumference of the Earth was only 2.9%. His was about 5. The reason his was about 5 was there were some questions as to the lengths of the units that he was using. Now another thing that's interesting on this is the triangulation of the distance to the Sun. As you can see, we did have some variation based on the fact that we had more than one shadow that we measured. If the Earth was flat, for example, we could measure the shadow on the equinox anywhere on the Earth and come up with the same distance to the Sun. 
By using more than one location, we were able to prove that this is not possible because the Earth is a globe. By using several different sites, we were able to accurately calculate the circumference and the radius of that spherical globe. So thank you for stopping by. Uh, the purpose of this lesson was to show that you don't need fancy equipment to do good science. I mean, we did this with builder squares and wooden dowels. So if you have a chance during the equinoxes, why don't you go ahead and get a stick and a piece of cardboard and a level and go out with your kids and measure the circumference of the earth. And while you're at it, have some pie on March 14th. This is Bob the Science Guy signing out from Northern Michigan. Thank you for stopping by and we'll see you soon.